Okay, welcome back to MP2. At this point, before you go on, you should be done with the server-side support for post favorite places. So you'll see that um, I'm passing that test. Uh, it's a little work. Um, and my working directory is clean. So I've committed my changes. I've, I've pushed everything. Um, I should have 30 points at this point, And I'm going to move on uh, to, our, to our next test. Um, now, the, at this point, what we've done is we've added support for adding a favorite place to our server. Um, the next thing to do is add it to our client so that the app can utilize this as part of a new activity that we're going to work on for the remainder of, of this checkpoint. Um, so the, the test case that we're looking at here is the, the second one, test one, uh, test client favorite places post. If you see why this is failing right now, it's failing for a fairly good reason, which is that I haven't implemented it yet. So let's go ahead and, and single out this test like we always do so that we can really zero in on, on what we're trying to accomplish here. Now. Um, let me close the commit dialog over here. Okay, open up my project view. Um, now, what does this need to do? So this needs to make a request, an HTTP request to the server, that's a post request, and pass it in the body of the request, the JSON serialized from the place that's passed to post favorite place. Um, I'm not gonna walk through how to do this in detail, mainly because um, you actually have a really good model to follow here. And one of the things that we're trying to teach you how to do in this particular test case, in this particular part of the test suite, um, sorry, in this particular part of the MP, is to sort of make progress by mimicking existing code. So it's like, well, I don't know how to make an HTTP request in, uh, in Kotlin and Android, but you have an example right here. Um, and so let's take this example and talk about kind of how we can modify it uh, to do what we need to do. So I'm just going to CMP this uh, whole piece, big chunk of code here and use it to replace what's in here. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and rename this variable. I don't know if you figured this out yet, but uh, Android Studio can help you with things like this. So I can call this post favorite place request and that changes that and then down here as well. So that's kind of neat. Now. This shows you how to build what's called a string request, which is the same type of request that we're going to use for our post. But there are some things that we need to fix. Um, so for example, this is a get request that's used to move data from the server to the client. We need to modify this to be a post request. It's also uh, accessing the wrong route. It's using the wrong URL on the server. So instead of places, we need to adjust this properly. Now, the other thing that's an issue um, is that um, I've got code here that is trying to take the contents of the response and deserialize them to a list of places. But with the post, what we're, there is no response body. There's just a response code. And so rather than returning uh, a result might throw that wraps a list of places, which is what we did previously, uh, all we needed here is a Boolean. So this can actually be uh, substantially simplified uh, because all I'm doing is basically, if it succeeded, return true, otherwise wrap the error. Um, okay, um, but the, the tricky thing here and the thing you might be noticing is where is the data? Like where is the information about the place? Uh, I need to put that in the request somewhere. Where am I doing that here? There's, there's not code that does that here uh, so far. Um, now, and, and, and what we need to do here, and this is where things are a little tricky and I will guide you here, um, is we need to, instead of using the standard string request constructor, we need to create an anonymous object that extends the string request. Um, and so in Kotlin, the way that we do this, uh, we do two things. First of all, I go up here and I use this syntax. So this allows me to create an anonymous object that extends string request. And then I open up a block way down here. So this is, you know, this whole thing from this parenthesis to this parenthesis, that's the string request constructor. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I need a body for my anonymous object that extends string requests. And there's a few methods that I'm going to need to override. Um, so let's look at, so if I start typing override, um, Android Studio will kind of give me some suggestions. Now, one of them is called get body. That sounds useful uh, because this allows me to, per, to pass a body for my request. Now, this is a byte array where what we're going to have from, um, from Jackson when we serialize our place is a string, but that's pretty easy to, to, to fix. So let's do this, uh, and then I do two byte array. Um, and if I hover over this, you'll see that Kotlin does the right thing here, which Java does not, which is by default, it uses the UTF-8 care set, which makes sure that we don't have problems on Windows. So you can just do this. Um, so what will happen now is that my post request will have the body test. 
as a byte array. Now, just to tie back to stuff we talked about earlier in the semester, um, why do I need, what's this thing with the care set or whatever? Um, so a string, remember, a string is characters, but computers think in terms of numbers. So the care set determines how that string gets converted to the actual numeric content of the request. Because you know, even though we talk about post requests being all strings, really what they are is all numbers because everything into a computer is a number. So this goes all the way back. We talked about ASCII a long time ago, uh, sort of a neat, neat connection to earlier material. Okay, so now, now this is not right because we're not supposed to put test in the body of the request, but this gives you a starting point for making sure that the content of the place object ends up in the body of the request. Okay, now there's another thing we need to override, and this is a little bit non-obvious, so again, I'll, I'll help you here. Uh, and this is something called get body content type. And what this does is allows us to tell the server what type of content is in this request. So we're giving it a string, but that string could be all types of different things. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it two things. We're gonna tell it that string contains JSON, and we're gonna tell it that the character encoding that was used to convert from the string to a numeric representation was UTF-8. And to do this, I'm just gonna go and grab uh, my server-side code and find uh, the, let's see, where is that? Uh, here it is, right? So it's the same thing that we see right here. This is used by the server. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and throw it on, over here on the client. And I can just go and, and, and use Kotlin's cool support for just, uh, you know, I don't need a body for this method. It's just returning a literal. Uh, there we go. Um, so this is now correct. Okay, so this is where I'm going to leave you. You have a great starting point. Uh, what do we still need to do? Uh, we need to adjust the method of the request so it's a post, not a get. We need to make sure that it's pointed at the right URL. Currently, it's not. We need to adjust the behavior on success and failure. This, this part of this gets way simpler, so don't overthink this. Um, and then we need to make sure that the place gets added to the body of the request uh, properly. So, uh, sorry, the, the place as JSONs. We're gonna take that place object that we have as a Kotlin object in memory, we're gonna serialize it to a string, and we're gonna stick it in the body of the request that we made to the server. Once we do these things, this will work. You'll be able to pass this test and move on.